Well, hello there, Five Minute Video. It's Keith, and I think what we should talk about is health. Uh, seriously, uh, one of the previous videos I did was, you know, about how the gospel is not saying a prayer, so you can go to heaven when you die. And one of the people that watched the video made a comment or asked a question and said, well, then what should we believe about health? And this is a big topic. I'm not going to try and do the whole thing in five minutes, so this will be part one. And here in part one, what I'd like to talk about is the fact that there have been, always has been, three different views, Christian views, of this idea of hell. Meaning Christians have disagreed from the beginning. Uh, and Christians have disagreed in the beginning, especially. Uh, not so much now, but in the beginning Christians disagreed, and they didn't necessarily uh, consider one another heretics if they didn't agree with this view or the other view. So first let me just explain what the three different views were. Okay. Uh, you already know the, the the one view, which is the most popular view most of us grew up with, which is the idea of eternal suffering, right? So if you die without Christ, you go to the judgment seat, uh, and you are cast into the lake of fire where you burn forever and ever and ever. Okay, that's one view. Um, but another view is the view that if you die without Christ, you go to the judgment seat, and then you're judged for your sins, and then you're thrown in the lake of fire, and you suffer for a, for an appropriate amount of time, not forever, um, and each person's amount of time of suffering would be different depending on their sins. And then after that time was up, they would just poof, cease to exist. You would be destroyed, you, you're you gone, it's over. And there are a lot of reasons to believe that, a lot of scriptures to support that view. And the third view is what is called universalism. The previous view, the middle view there, is um, uh, annihilationism. So the third view is universalism, and that teaches that if you die without Christ, you go to the judgment seat of Christ, you are cast into the lake of fire, or cast into the hell, or you, a place of suffering. You suffer for, again, the allotted amount of time appropriate for your sins. And then after that, instead of being destroyed, you are given an opportunity to repent. And, um, and there's a lot of verses in the scriptures to support that view as well. So let me tell you something else you may not know. I'm going to quote here from a Christian encyclopedia on this very subject. And it says this. Uh, it says, the earliest system of universal theology, which again, that's universal theology is the one, the, the last one I just described, where you die, you suffer, and you are given an opportunity to repent at the end of that suffering. So the earliest system of that view, universalist theology, was held by Clement of Alexandria, and he was the head of a theological school in Alexandria until 202 AD, and his successor in that school was Origen, one of the early church fathers. Uh, and he, by the way, Origen was the most distinguished advocate of the view of universalism of his day. Uh, it goes on to say, in the first five or six centuries of Christianity, there were six different theological schools, of which four of them were universalist. So four out of six, the majority of them, taught universalism for the first five or six centuries. I'll bet that's a shock to you. That's, that's a shock to most people when they find that out. What? The majority of Christians for like five or six hundred years believed in universalism. It's true. Uh, the minorities, the, the two minority reviews, uh, views were eternal suffering and annihilation or destructionism. Um, now, here's what's interesting. The, the, four, uh, the four schools that taught universalism were located in Alexandria, Antioch, Caesarea, and Edessa. Okay, the, the one that taught conditional immortality or destruction or annihilationism uh, was in Ephesus. And the one that taught eternal suffering was located in Rome. Rome. Now, why is it, why do you think that the, this minority view of eternal suffering ended up being the dominant view? Uh, like here we are now, and the dominant view for all most Christians is eternal suffering. Do you think the fact that it was taught in Rome has something to do with it? Because we know that Rome sort of became really important, right, uh, around the time of Constantine and beyond. Hmm, maybe that has something to do with why eternal suffering is the popular view today. And that's one of the reasons. Um, so anyway, those are the three views of Christian that Christianity has held from the beginning. And... Um, so in the videos coming up, what I will do is focus uh, a little bit more detail on each of those three views and why uh, we should either accept it or reject it 
or what evidence is for it or against it. Okay? Thanks for listening. Again, leave me comments. Let me know what you think. And I appreciate you watching and I appreciate your comments so much. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.